Hey guys, so if you haven't watched Carl Jobs' most recent video, the completionist response is the worst thing ever. I would go ahead and watch it. He makes free accusations straight off the bat, and one of them involves the golf tournament, which is the reason that uh, the completionist believes he can sue for slander. Now... I've already gone over the case. I actually didn't know who the completionist is. And so I ha went back to watch some of his videos. The idea that he kind of wants to tell his audience is that he's a very wholesome individual. He is a individual who would never, never use his mom's dead mom's name for his personal advantage. But looking at how he's operated the business, it is obvious to me that he's operated his own business in such a way that it resembles more of a YouTube channel than it resembles a charity. So Open Hand Foundation, the way, way they were getting money, the way they were doing marketing, the way they were doing all of this stuff indicates that he was using the foundation as kind of a way to get more subscribers as a way to get sell merchandise and coins and run i mean this isn't the first time i covered another guy called the mana source from the magic the gathering community where he used charity to weaponize and defend because it's really hard to criticize somebody who's running a charity right the charity for the most part is a really simple thing to run it collects money it donates the money so the fact that this is a charity not run in this very simple manner would indicate that something is something has gone horrifically wrong, either in gross negligence or just uh, he's a bad person. So I think what I have concluded is that he is just a bad human being. And I say this watching his videos and then watching his response where he gets kind of angry at the end. Um, there is no doubt in my mind that this is an individual who used his dead mom to promote his YouTube channel. How many times does he talk about his dead mom, his dead mom, his dead mom, his dead mom? And in no aspect is he respecting his dead mom, right? Uh, he even bought out the autopsy. The autopsy. Um, this, in my opinion, is both a little bizarre and it's a straw hat argument that really has no meaning um, and it doesn't make any sense for why he would even mention it. So again, back to why he is running this charity. Uh, I don't think the main, the main reason the charity is going to donate money, the same the golf tournament and all this, it's a interesting story it tugs at the heartstrings but it's not really i mean he's still able to use the money some of the bits subscribers and so on uh car jobs makes a really interesting point you can basically rally your audience right and then they can be subscribed to your amazon and supposedly all that money is going to the san francisco research foundation which they still haven't received a penny as of this today and I don't think they will ever receive a penny, even though he is a leading donor, right, <laughs> of that foundation, which is hilarious to think about, right? Uh, why the San Francisco Research Foundation never called him out on it, uh, I don't know. I mean, they might even have a legal case against them for using their name to get donations when, in fact, they did not receive a single penny. But that's neither here nor there because he used his names of various foundations to try to get more money. Um, this is business in America. This is what big business does. Uh, Gerard is not like a small little dude. He's a big YouTuber and he's run his YouTube with very effectively. Uh, he's got subscribers. So when you subscribe to his indie land, you probably are still subscribed to him for a little bit and you feel good. You know, hey, I man, I subscribe to you because you are helping support your dead mom for dementia. He definitely benefited from the Indie Land and the Open Hand Foundation. He benefited from working with developers he otherwise wouldn't have worked with. He benefited from, you know, when people donate, those are uber fans. Those are people, I, I rarely have donations on my channel. I just don't have those uber fans, nor do I have like something I would be promoting. 
Right? When people start donating money in their mind, it's kind of the sunken fallacy, sunken cost fallacy. They're they're going to defend this guy. And there's a lot of people who are leaving very harassing and frightening messages. And I know they have donated large sums of money to him. They just can't mentally understand that this guy is a fraud, right? They can't mentally understand they donated because in their mind, why, why would they do that, right? They could just donate straight to charity if they cared that much. He's got the wheels. He got. I mean, if you really look at him and the way he's run this indie land, it was never about the charity and donations because that money, I mean, he can spend hours and weeks and months and preparing for this, right? He can spend hundreds of of dollars thousands of dollars of donations you know running the event as he said and running the golf event which uh even though it didn't raise any money apparently it cost five thousand dollars to run um and it was taken out of the open hand foundation there's a lot of things that you know are very sus right and the more sus things that are happening the more you have to like really understand like in 2022 Business expenses, dues and subscriptions, fundraising. He had $4,700. Golf fundraising expenses was $5,236. Insurance, $434. This is the 2022 IRS 990. Why is there a golf fundraising expense of $5,236 if the golf tournament didn't make any money? Like, wouldn't that be like the opposite of a charity? It would just be like you using charity money to run a golf tournament that was fun for you and your family to attend. Right? There, there's many things that Gerard, no receipts. He, I watched his video. There are no receipts. There are many things that Gerard has not told you. And I think it is worth talking about. Um, and, and many of these things that are, that there's, he is not a good human being. Uh, I don't know what human being would use their dead mom to promote their YouTube. It's obvious to me that he's using Indie Land to promote his YouTube and Twitch. Like, we all know. I mean, I'm a YouTuber. I'm taking advantage of a hot topic, right? I'm, I own a marketing agency. I can tell you what he's doing because... I mean, and it, it makes perfect sense to me because if I was in his position, it would be something I would think about doing, but I would never do because I don't want to end up in jail. Uh, I, I don't want to be criticized that heavily. But what he's thinking of is something that every YouTuber already, already knows, that if you run a charity, you can get a very supportive fan base because it's like what I said, even if somebody donate a dollar, that person basically is a super fan. That's what YouTube calls you guys. Super fan, super chat, right? Um, he is able to monetize, right? He's able to use, this is the, what, um, when I was criticizing the mana source who actually ran away to, he took everybody's money and ran away to a different country, to the UK. And now, and he came back recently and uh, he tried to do the same scam, but no one fell for it this time because they already knew that what he was going to do. He was going to take the money and run to a different country yet again. But what you're doing is you're using your charity to weaponize. Now, no one can say anything bad about you, right? No one, the, the way that he's used his dead mom, I agree with Carl Jobs, is absolutely despicable. The, the amount of times this dude mentions his dead, like, how about the people with dementia who's suffering right now? Could you get one of them to talk about it and the problems they have and how you've helped them? No, you can't because you didn't donate a cent. Right? There, there, there's no one he's helping today. Did you understand what the, the, the point of dementia research is? It's to help people today and tomorrow. And by using his dead mom as kind of a crutch, he's using somebody who unfortunately has already passed away for 10 years. But he, he's not understanding that the, to honor her, he needs to help people today and tomorrow and not keep money in a bank account for 10 years. That's gross negligence. This dude can spend weeks on week, hours and hours. He can play 24 hours of video games. He can talk to developers. He can work his ass off. But he can't, like, do the research to find out who to donate. It, it doesn't make any sense, right? And then and suddenly when it came time to do the research, he could do it. He could do it. Obviously, he could do it, right? He did it in a week. Um, there are a lot of 
things that I think Gerard doesn't want you to understand. And one of them as a YouTuber, I'm going to explain to you the best way to grow your YouTube channel is to get behind a charity, preferably your own charity. Because once those people, once you have people who donate money, they're going to tell other people about your channel. Hey, man, because they want to feel good about them. This is the social media that we live in today. I own a marketing agency. If you can get one dude to donate a dollar, I bet you that guy tells 10, 20, 50 people online how great of a person they are. Oh, man, I donated the, the, uh, what do you guys do today? I donated to uh, dementia today or dementia research, not dementia, obviously. Um. That's how it works. Even Facebook has that little thing, right? You donate a dollar and then it's on your front page. Oh, I donated to uh, so-and-so's uh, bicycling campaign today. And, you know, this fundraiser, that fundraiser. We live in a society where GoFundMes, Kickstarters, like all these fundraisers are just like normal daily stuff, right? Um, I think at the end of the day, um, the best way to grow your channel is exactly what this guy did. His channel would not be as big if he didn't have IndieLand. I 100% guarantee you that. His channel would be half the size without IndieLand. And he's been on the IndieLand crutch, and could, no one could attack him because it's about his dead mom, right? It's always about his... The, the, again, the number of times this guy, out of context, out of the blue, Hey, my dead mom. Hey, my dead mom. My dead mom. The, 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 the number of times... This guy has talked about his dead mom over 10 years. You know, obviously we all have relatives who have passed away. But I've never, you know, again, Carl Jobs, you know, um, if he's watching this, hey, you know, uh, his, his mom passed away. And I, don't, I didn't know about that. I watched Carl all the time. And I didn't know about that. Um, because he's not using it as a weapon to monetize charity. Gerard? 100% benefit. So, like, one of the things that you look at from a legal perspective is who benefited from the fraud, and it was Gerard. He got more subscribers. He got more Twitch followers. He got more views. He got more donations. Literally, cash, cash money, homie, right? He literally benefited the most of anyone we can imagine from uh, his quote charity. And this is how a lot of YouTubers run their charities. This, he's not the only one. There's going to be more. I guarantee you there's going to be more because the best way to get subscribers and views and, arm, and an army of really, really top followers is for them to donate to your charity for your dead mom. He took advantage of it for 10 years and now it turned out that it was never about his dead mom. It was about him.